Uh, so hi everyone. Today we'll try to understand the Langchain framework. So since the starting of this year, LMs have been a very hot topic in the field of AI. But recently, the focus has been shifted not just on building up new LLMs, but how to use this LLMs for real-world problems. For which Langchain is the front runner. So Langchain is a great framework that helps you to implement multiple use cases using LLMs. So let's get started. Today we'll try to understand the whole architecture. What are the different modules it provides to us? So this block covers these modules, models uh, that LM that Langchain provides, prompt templates, output parser, chains, memory, retriever, agent, and callbacks. So let's get started. So we'll be talking about the first module that is models. So Langchain provides two types of models. Uh, like eventually internally everything is using different LLMs, but on a course note, uh, what are the two basic templates of model it is providing us? So one of them is class LLMs. So it is a general LLM that you can run on your local system. So uh, very similar to hugging face models also. Uh, you need to provide a prompt and eventually it will give you an answer. So here you can see an example of using a LLM model. Now the other type of model is a chat model. So chat model also under uses LLMs only under the hood. But basically it also adds a specific uh, structure of using the LLM as a chat bot. So uh, in chat models, Basically, we have three major components, a human message, a prompt given by the user, AI message, a, a reply given by the AI, and a very interesting component called a system message. So it is a context that we can pass to the chat model about its role. So in the below example, you can see that how uh, in the system message, you're passing it as you are a grammar teacher who responds to yes for correct grammar input. So we are actually telling the LLM, the chat model what its role is using the system message. You can also provide other context also. And then eventually we are using the human message. We are providing the prompt, actual prompt. So in case of LLM models, as you saw in the first one, we're directly providing the prompt, but here we need to provide the prompt using the human message template. So here you can see that uh, example of how making a chat model. Now, how to make these prompts more customizable. So here you can see that we are using a straight string, right? Now, eventually it can be the case that I want to make it a grammar teacher, but for German or French. So how to customize these templates? So for that also LinkedIn provides us prompt templates. So in this also, we have two major categories. One is prompt template, which is basically used for LLM type of models. And the other is chat prompt model, which is used for basically chat models in LinkedIn. So let's get started. So in case of prompt template, it is used to create prompt from a string input. So using prompt templates, you can do multiple things. You can pass variables also. Multiple variables can be passed. So here you can see that how you can create a prompt template for like for an essay generator. So here I'm writing down write lines about topic. So there are two variables that I'm introducing in this uh, particular template. That is one is lines and another is topics. And eventually when I'm formatting, I'm providing these two particular parameters. Lines equals to five and topic equals to India. Or eventually using prompt template, you can uh, simply write down normal prompts also without using any variables as you can see in the second example now similar to prompt template is chat prompt template as i told you earlier only so chat prompt templates are basically used with chat models as we discussed earlier so they also follow the same uh, structure as followed by chat models that is they have a system message ai message human message so uh, in chat prompt template we'll be having templates for all these three categories so here you can see that how to use a chat prompt template so here you can see that it, uh, we are importing the chat prompt template from prompts and from messages we are eventually providing the different messages that we can provide. So AI message we are not providing because this is a response given by the uh, model itself. The other two messages that are providing a system message which is very similar to what we did in chat models and human message prompt template. So it is very similar to prompt template. Here we can also uh, pass URL uh, variables as we are passing in prompt template. So now. Uh, a major issue that you would be facing with uh, LLMs is how to get a constant format in the output. So like, for example, you might need to use uh, an LLM for classification purpose where you wish to get just two categories as an output, a yes or no. But at times LLMs are also adding some extra words so that such a system can't be directly used in a production system. So how to use that? So how to make your format constant using output parsers? So using output parsers module, we can eventually format the output that an uh, chat, chat model or an LLM model is giving to us. So here you can see that how you can in this particular example, we are using we are trying to set the output as a 
comma separated list of entities. So that is a way of importing a predefined output parser that is comma separated list output parser. We are assigning it to a variable output parser. Here you can see that this other the example remains same. We are using a prompt template where we are passing input variables alphabet. But while creating this prompt template here, you can see that partial variables were far We are passing it as the formal instructions that we are getting from the output parser object. So eventually within the prompt template only we are trying to set up the output structure of the particular element that we wish to have. Now this output parser can be customized also or there are multiple output parsers present but this is just an example how you output parsers actually work. Now coming to the most important segment of lang chains that is chains. So basically uh, the above examples that we saw were quite easy but eventually you might be building out more complex uh, applications using LLMs where you might be interacting with multiple LLMs you would be taking multiple actions it wouldn't be a single action uh, problem where you are providing a problem and getting an answer it might not be like that eventually or you might need to integrate with specific third party tools or APIs or Python or packages so in that case chains can be of a great help so in this particular example I will be showing you how you can create a SQL database chain. So what it will do, it will eventually interact with the SQL database and then eventually apply an LLM to generate queries for you. So why <coughs> chains are required? Because they can be taken as a programs that we can generate using LLM. So when you write a program with an LLM, it's not just the LLM with a prompt, but you would be adding some uh, other logics as well. So that would be getting help using chains that we have. So in this particular example, you can see that we are creating a SQL database chain. So what we are doing, uh, we are in using the SQL database and we would be able to connect with this particular uh, server and then eventually using the, ta uh, the tables present at this server we would be uh, providing a prompt to write queries for us. So it is not just giving a prompt and getting an answer but it is doing some internal work also to access the data, to connect with the server. So that stuff uh, is getting helped with a chain. Now a chain has some restrictions that eventually a chain can be used for a very specific task like for example here you can see that this particular chain SQL database chain can be used for just generating queries from SQL databases or there are other chains like uh, article uh, like text tagging chains which can be used for just tagging the text they are not flexible enough now moving on to memory so this is very easy to understand as we interact with chat GPT in a particular session you would notice that it is able to remember the previous conversations in that particular chat so you can uh, refer to some uh, past text that you have messaged in that particular chat and eventually you can ask questions on that also. But when you are using LLMs in your local system, you, you don't have that facility. So to add memory, uh, Elangchain provides you with a module that is a memory module. Here you can see that what we would be doing is we would be adding a conversational buffer memory so that eventually whatever we are chatting with the LLM object using Langchain, it would be able to remember its response and your question also. So eventually in the future, you can have a reference on that. So in this particular example, you can see that uh, in the template that we are creating, we are passing a variable called as chat history. And when we are calling this conversational buffer memory, so we are, we are passing this variable chat history that we use in template as a memory key. That's it. You don't need to do anything else. And when you would be creating an LLM chain, you need to pass memory uh, parameter as memory. That is a conversational buffer memory object. Moving on to retrieval. So basically, uh, at times you might need to provide external context to LLMs to ask certain questions like for example you might need to question answer from a document that you have you want to uh, question answer from a PDF that you have you have a YouTube video which you want to understand using the LLM but eventually uh, to provide this access to external resources a retrieval module would be very very helpful so we will be first of all trying to understand what this retrieval mod module is all about so retrieval module has majorly five segments the document loader basically this component helps you to load the external resource now that can be a text file that can be a pdf that can be youtube video also document transformer the so, document transformer is basically helpful in pre-processing the data that you have loaded third one is an embedding model which generates embedding for the text the document that you have loaded and transformed in the memory because machine uh, because LMs can't interact directly with sending you need to generate an embedding and eventually any ML model can't interact directly with text fourth one in vector databases and these databases are specialized in storing 
vector data that is the embeddings that we will be generating using the document that we have loaded we will be eventually storing into vector database and retrievers to retrieve meaningful entries given the prompt so when you get a prompt for the llm like for example i uploaded a csv and then eventually i will ask a question ki uh, which row represents uh, rahul it can be some data so retriever would be going through this vector database and getting the relevant rows for rahul and eventually the llm would be structuring the whole output so retriever is basically like uh, provides a query to the vector database to fetch the meaningful embeddings from the system so there is a small demo on how you can load a text file and then eventually ask the question on the system so here we would be using chroma db as uh, as a vector store for us so here you can see that using text loader we are loading a abc.txt file eventually using character text splitter and text splitter dot split documents we are pre processing the data that is document transformer then we are generating uh, embedding using open ai embeddings we are using chroma db for creating the database and eventually we are creating the retrieval qa dot from chain type eventually this retrieval qa will help us to retrieve data alongside the llm object that we provided so it is combining the functionality of the retriever as well as the llm and eventually when we will be asking question what this document about summarize it in a paragraph to be able to do that now coming to a very very important segment and because of which langton is a very popular that is agents so agent the concept of agent is very very close to the concept of chains but with a uh, exception so as i told you while explaining chains that chains are very hard coded so they are they are chains for specific task chains are not flexible but this is not the case with agents so basically in case of an agent the sequence of actions that would be taken is not predefined in case but this is predefined in case of chain so as we were discussing the sql uh, sql database chain in the previous example there everything internally is decided ki you would be first going to the database i will be fetching the data and eventually i will be generating a response query in case of agent that is not the case if interacting with the database is not required like for example if you have sent hi this is me this doesn't require interaction with the sql database right so eventually agents will skip that so agents are more intelligent and are more flexible as compared to chains so in case of uh, agents the backend uses some llm to decide over which action to take so not just for generating response but for even choosing the action uh, agent llms are used but in case of chains this is hard coded also agents are more diverse and you can integrate multiple different types of tools so in case of uh, chains as i told you they would be serving a, a particular purpose but this is not the case with chains uh, with not with agents you can have multiple agendas for an agent so for example you can have an agent that has access to google search maths calculator and retriever for some external documents so these are three different tools that were added to the agent now for example for such an agent if i ask a question hello llm it would be able to give an answer and it will be uh, it won't break but in case of a chain providing this multiple diverse functionality is very very difficult and even if you do it you need to hard code the whole code and eventually if you ask it hello llm it might break down also or might might give you bogus answer also because it is not able to pass through these three stages properly because these three stages are hard coded for a chain if there is a chain exists for such a case so if you want a more flexible and dynamic app agents are a better option but if your use case is very very constant like for example you just wish to build a uh, ner model no mnt recognition in that case chains are uh, chains are better so creating an agent is quite easy so uh, in this particular example i would be creating a agent that has access to google search results using the serp api wrapper so serp api you need to have a serp api then you need to get an llm object then you need to create a tool so tool is basically a functionality that agent is able to do so here you can see that uh, the tool name is current search search dot run useful when you need to answer questions about current state of the world so if uh, what are prompt you give it the agent will the agent will decide whether to use this particular tool that is current search for giving it answer or not then we will be initializing the agent and we will be asking it questions what about, what happened in g20 meeting 2003 that happened in delhi so for this the agent should be able to recognize that i need to access the internet and eventually it will be able to use this tool you can have multiple diverse tools that you can check in my channel ki how you can create a agent which can have multiple tools and which can have custom tools also which are not provided by langchain coming to the last module that is callbacks so langchain offers callback system 
for logging purposes majorly so uh, this is very similar to what we have in keras and tensorflow also so basically it will help you log in, uh, uh, log your results monitor the working of an llm streaming and other essential purposes so again uh, we would be explaining you how you can create a standard callback handler which will be printing out every log input uh, every log on the output screen so we would be first importing standard uh, std out callback handler from callbacks creating an llm we're using a prompt we would be calling the lang, uh, lang llm chain we would be passing callbacks parameter as handler the handler object that we created and rest of things remain same once you run it all the logs will be getting printed on a print screen also so with this we'll be ending up so here in this particular vlog you understood how what are the different modules of lang chain and how they work what they can be used for and eventually you also saw examples how these modules can be used for accessing an lm better